former FBI director James Comey's testimony rocks Washington as he accuses the White House of lying and President Donald Trump of heavy-handed pressure. A shocking outcome in the British elections as the Labour Party surges, leaving Prime Minister Theresa May's leadership in the balance. And how military intelligence tactics are helping in the war against poaching. Africa 54 starts right now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. Now, Washington is still buzzing following FBI Director James Comey's much anticipated Capitol Hill testimony, accusing the White House of lying about his dismissal and accusing Donald Trump of repeatedly pressuring him to carry out the president's wishes. Now, Comey told the Senate panel Thursday that Trump himself was not a target of the FBI's Russia investigation and declined to say whether the president's actions constituted an obstruction of justice. Here's viewers Michael Bowman. While a nation held its breath and onlookers swarmed to Capitol Hill, James Comey broke his silence one month after President Trump fired him as FBI director and White House officials accused him of leaving the FBI in disarray. Those were lies, plain and simple. And I am so sorry that the FBI workforce had to hear them, and I'm so sorry that the American people were told them. Comey detailed a series of one-on-one -on -one meetings and telephone calls he says Trump orchestrated. I was so stunned by the conversation because it was very, very awkward. He was asking for something and I was refusing to give it. Specifically, Comey said, the president wanted an end to the FBI's probe of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who lied about contacts with Russia's ambassador. I took it as a direction. Right. I mean, this is the president of the United States with me alone saying, I hope this. And Comey said Trump pressed him to publicly affirm that he personally was not under investigation. The exchanges led Comey to undertake something he had not done with previous presidents, write memos about his dealings with Trump. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. And a tweet from Trump suggesting their conversations might have been taped prompted Comey to leak some memos. Look, I, I've seen the tweet about tapes. Lordy, I hope there are tapes. Democrats stressed the severity of the allegations. This is not a witch hunt. This is not fake news. President Trump behaved in completely inappropriate and unethical ways across the line. Uh, the head of our uh, FBI is supposed to be independent of partisan politics. Republicans zeroed in on Comey's testimony that Trump requested a halt of the Flynn probe, not the Russia investigation as a whole. Director Comey, did the president at any time ask you to stop the FBI investigation into Russian involvement in the 2016 U.S. elections? Not to my understanding, no. Trump didn't tweet during the hearing, but his legal team said the president has been vindicated. Mr. Comey has now finally confirmed publicly what he repeatedly told President Trump privately. That is, that the president was not under investigation as part of any probe into Russian interference. At the same time, the White House is denying Comey's allegations about pressure from Trump. Either Jim Comey or Donald Trump is lying about some significant things. Whatever you think of him, no one doubts his honesty. As eye-popping as Comey's public testimony was in the morning, the former FBI director went behind closed doors in the afternoon to answer even more sensitive questions. Michael Bowman, VOA News, the Capitol. Well, across the pond now, on the hills of one of the most shocking elections in modern British history, Prime Minister Theresa May says she will form a government backed by a small Northern Irish party after her Conservative Party lost its parliamentary majority just days before launching talks on Britain's European Union departure. May says she can rely on Parliament on the support of her friends and Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party. Confident of securing a sweeping victory, May had called the snap election to strengthen her hand in the EU divorce talks. But a resurgent Labour Party denied her an outright win, throwing the country into political turmoil. Speaking on the doorstep of our Fisher Downing Street residence, 
May says the government will provide certainty and lead Britain in talks with the European Union to secure a successful Brexit deal. I have just been to see Her Majesty the Queen and I will now form a government. A government that can provide certainty and lead Britain forward at this critical time for our country. This government will guide the country through the crucial Brexit talks that begin in just 10 days and deliver on the will of the British people by taking the United Kingdom out of the European Union. Well, EU leaders expressed fears that May's standing loss of a majority would delay the Brexit talks due to begin on June the 19th and raise the risk of negotiations failing. In East Africa, South Sudan, civil war continues unabated, forcing thousands of people to flee to neighboring countries. U.S. lawmaker Chris Smith last week led a congressional delegation to the Bidi Bidi camp of Uganda, which is now home to thousands of refugees from South Sudan. He later visited Juba, where he met with South Sudanese President Salva Kiir. Salva Kiir has one last opportunity now to step up to the plate uh, and reform his military, prosecute people who commit heinous crimes, and, and allow unfettered access for, of humanitarian aid to those who are suffering. Because even if there was a ceasefire tomorrow that, was, that would hold, there still needs to be, you know, the dissemination of food and medicines and the like uh, in a very, very aggressive way. Now, the civil war in South Sudan erupted in December 2013 and has killed thousands of people and displaced millions, most of them women and children. Well, I want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. We are also streaming our show live on Facebook. So check us out and share our show with your friends also. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCory. Coming up, how skepticism over fake news is impacting a newspaper in small town America. Stay with us. I'm Milar Sega. I'm the host of VOA's The Correspondence, a roundup of the world's top stories with analysis from our dedicated reporters. It's really a conversation the same way that you would bring a friend to your home and ask them what's going on. And our correspondents will do that and answer those questions through their own eyes. That appears a false choice in more ways than one. We can't actually put you there, but we can come pretty close. In 30 minutes, we'll show you the world. Welcome back. Now, the United Nations Oceans Conference wraps up today at the United Nations headquarters in New York. The goal of the week-long event was to be the driving force to reverse the decline in the health of our oceans for people, planet, and prosperity. For more insight on the conference, viewers Margaret Bashir joins us live from the United Nations. Hello, Margaret. Hey, Vincent. Now, what happened uh, this week at the Ocean Conference, the whole week? Well, I got bad news for you, Vincent. Uh -oh. Our oceans are sick, and we, uh, mankind, we're making them sick, and we need to stop. And so let me tell you what's poisoning the ocean. It's things like plastic forks and knives, drinking straws, and plastic bags that we get at the supermarket and other places like that. And these are ending up in the ocean, and more than 8 million tons of this junk is making the ocean sick. And then guess what happens? It, it, uh, fish ingest it, seabirds choke on it, mammals swallow it and die, and it breaks down, it stays in the ecosystem for ages, and then it becomes teeny tiny, and even plankton can eat the plastic. And so what happens then? We eat the fish that have eaten the plastic. So it's bad all around. But there's good news. The good news is if we stop you know, using plastic beverage bottles and switch to reusable ones, if we recycle, uh, you know, if we take measures like that on an individual level as well as on a national level on a, on a larger scale, we can prevent this damage to the oceans from continuing. Because right now they're saying by 2050, there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish. So think about that. Uh, Greg, you, but, uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, so, but the good news is 
people and governments are taking steps to uh, rectify this problem already. So for instance, Kenya, 1,400 uh, kilometers of coastline line off of Kenya, 500 kilometers of coral reefs. In February, the government in Kenya took the step of banning plastic bags. So, you know, it didn't happen overnight. It's not happening overnight, but they're making the effort. They're starting. They're taking the step. They're trying to get this out of their environment. And uh, other countries are, are doing similar things. Yep. Uh, other countries are seeing it makes good economic sense to clean up their beaches, especially if they have a big tourism industry. So there's a lot of action going on on that here, and we had what they call a call to action, a, a document, a, an outcome document here today, more than 1,000 voluntary commitments from governments, civil society, academia, science, scientists, yeah, on now, ways we can fix the oceans. Very quickly, uh, at all countries in agreement on uh, the need to take those actions? Or do you find that ma perhaps those ones that have a longer coastline or small islands are more passionate about those issues? Certainly, we're seeing a huge presence here by Pacific Island nations. The majority of the region of the world is water, and their islands are just 2% of, of the land. So uh, definitely the Pacific region, Asia, Asia is one of the biggest polluters. So they are stepping up and, and taking responsibility. But there is a general international consensus that, that we need to take this in hand because, the we look, we get oxygen, half of our mm -hmm. oxygen from the ocean. So we've got to take care of the, of the oceans for the oceans to take care of us. Indeed we do, and now you make me feel bad. I use plastic and I love That's fish. That's right. Go get your reusable <laughs> bottle. Don't get your reusable thank shopping you. bag. You got to take small steps. All every of us. one of us, every one of us. Margaret, thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, viewers, uh, UN correspondent Margaret Bashir reporting live from New York. Now, the past year has seen a rise in fake news sites, sensationalized, fact-free zone fueled sometimes by politics, sometimes for financial gain. And viewers Deepak Dopal reports on how this is playing out in the small town of Mount Carroll, Illinois. There is something strange going on along the banks of the upper Mississippi River. I would say the people that I interact with, and, uh, you know, it's many, many people in this community and in this county. They have a general uh, attitude of not believing anything. Bob Watson runs the local newspaper in this small heartland town. Mount Carroll may be far from the media-soaked cities of America's coast, but it is not immune to the rise of fake news sites. Because they're not believing what's coming out on social media, they're also not believing what the national broadcasting companies are doing and uh, all the national networks and the mainstream papers like the New York Times or the Washington Post, Chicago Tribune, it makes them skeptical of them too. It's a skepticism reinforced by President Trump, who still enjoys support around here. Trump often calls unfavorable coverage of himself fake news, blurring the lines between established media and news sites that run lies for profit politics or both. I have people who joke with me and say, oh, is that fake news, Bob? Or, uh, you know, how do I know that those aren't alternative facts? The traditional newspaper man says so far his paper with its coverage of local events has been spared the destabilizing effect of the fake news label. Just kind of joking around, but you know that it's uh, in their thought process that they're thinking about it. And, you know, you kind of wonder how far is this going to go? feel like maybe it's heading in that direction. Deepak Dobhal, VOA News, Mount Carroll, Illinois. You probably know it. So there's an old Chinese saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Well, this proverb could not be more relevant today. Since 2010, Solar Sisters has helped women in Africa build businesses and become entrepreneurs. Viewers Paul Dio has our report. Sometimes all people need is a literal head start, not a handout. Unlike most non-profit organizations, Solar Sisters' business model is unique. They help women in poor and remote parts of Africa start small businesses and a living by selling products such as solar lamps, mobile phone chargers, and fuel-efficient stoves. Niha Misra is the co-founder of Solar Sisters, a Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit working in Africa. 
We work with communities uh, all over um, Tanzania, Nigeria, and Uganda. And when we go to a community, we introduce Solar Sisters business opportunity to the community leaders. And we open the opportunity for women to have their own micro businesses mm -hmm. by becoming Solar Sisters. There is an enormous business opportunity for solar energy products in Sub-Saharan Africa. Women entrepreneurs in some of the poorest and most remote communities are taking advantage of the sun. Misra says investing in women is not only the right thing to do, but also the smart thing to do. Most of the people are still not realizing that the largest untapped renewable energy uh, source in the world is woman power because women all over the world are most adversely impacted by uh, what we call energy poverty, that mm. is not having the most basic access to clean energy. The organization has more than 250 entrepreneurs across East Africa and Nigeria, and they hope to expand to other countries shortly. Solar Sisters, a women entrepreneurs network, lifts rural women from poverty by training them as small business owners. Instead of receiving loans to start a business, women invest their own money, and they are empowered with the knowledge and skills that run a small business. We started with 10 women in 2010 mm -hmm. and now we have a network of more than 2400 women wow. in Uganda, in Nigeria and in Tanzania and we have in this time brought clean energy to more than 800,000 people who can now have light for studying, light for uh, household chores at night, mm. women have additional income, uh, you know girls can feel safe when they are mm. going out at night. For example, as night falls, life comes to a halt for millions of people in remote villages. Families are forced to use a smoky kerosene lamps or spend hours collecting firewood. But with the solar-powered lamps, parents can see a rare hope of light. We have continued to grow and our uh, aim is to scale this more so more uh, people in communities across Africa and rest of the world can really adopt our model mm. and look at women not as victims of mm. uh, you know, not having energy mm. but really change makers uh, in their communities. Despite years of robust growth, Misra says there is still room for growth and that the non-profit is not without its challenges. Paul Ndiho, VOA News. Washington. Well, it's time now for a short break. Still to come on Africa 54, how military intelligence tactics are helping fight the war on wildlife poaching and trafficking. Be right back. Zaydrad al Hussein is calling on the UN Human Rights Council to establish an international investigation into the widespread human rights violations. Not one of the suspects for whom arrest warrants have been issued has been arrested and transferred to the International Criminal Court. <laughs> Welcome back to Africa 54. Here's what's trending. A former intelligence expert with the U.S. Air Force is turning her hand to conservation. Lieutenant Colonel Faye Tre uh, Trevor spent half a uh, military career providing intelligence support to U.S. counterinsurgencies in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Somalia. She says her skills can now help save the planet's remaining wild elephants. Together with the International Fund for Animal Welfare, 
A chip was introduced a smartphone-based software application to existing units of rangers and field investigators. The app allows information to be entered and read in real time rather than being written up in reports at the end of a day's patrolling. Well, next up, an e-book distribution startup is disrupting traditional book publishing in recession-hit Nigeria. Launched in 2013 by Nigerian uh, entrepreneur Okechuku Ofili, Okada Books gives authors a platform to distribute their work to larger audiences without having to go through big publishing houses. Made for the African market, Okada Books has over 100,000 members today and is available as an app. Okada Books sell um, books for as little as a quarter of the price paperback books cost in stores. Now users pay for the digital books by card or mobile money transfer services available in Nigeria. Authors earn 70% royalties on each sale. Well, and finally, high-end luxury accommodation has arrived in downtown Havana. Guests can expect to pay up to $2,500 a night to stay in a five-star comfort at the Grand Hotel Manzana. The multi-million dollar restoration project is part of a broader trend in Havana that is seeing buildings and homes and a renovation to meet the growing tourism market. But critics and some visitors see luxury as an unwelcome development for a country that has prided itself on its socialist principles and say few Cubans can afford such high-end products, which they say is aimed at attracting affluent Europeans and Americans. And that is what is trending today. Well, it's time now for our Friday Music Makers segment. Today, we are featuring a Cameroonian artist called Kopo, and his brand new music video is Gramology. Here to tell us more about it is uh, a music, uh, uh, Africa, mu Africa, music, music time, time in uh, Africa. The host. Now, you took it from me. <laughs> You're going to tell us a bit more about the music and the artist. First, sure. very, very interesting kind of uh, video here. Yeah. What is this guy trying to do? Well, first of all, the name of the song is Gromology in Gromologie. French. Gromology. Gromology. Well, in, in, in French, French yeah. it's important because in yeah. French, so gros is big and exactly. mo is word. So, uh -huh. and ology is like the study of like sociology. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's really a spoof that t that name on people who use really big words when it's not necessary. To impress To Irish. impress. So that's the title of the song. <laughs> and Mono then in Shin. Cameroon, obviously, there's some also a kind of a language issue where they mix like three different languages, right? Yes. The, well, this artist specifically, he's the, he came yeah. up with this using um, really emphasizing urban vernacular languages mm -hmm. in his music and in his words. Yeah. And so he calls this Cam Franglais. Cam Franglais. So Cam for Cameroon, Fran for Francais or French, and Glais or Anglais for English. So it's a mix of all of these words and terms and yeah. um, a lot of the vernacular language in the urban areas yeah. you know, are these little code words that young yeah. people like to use oh, right. to, uh, to hide saying things in front of parents and teachers. Yeah. And so Very sleek. Very. So let's let's watch this video and see how first he plays around with the with videography and he plays around yeah. with editing and uh, some other stuff <laughs> on the words. Uh, so let's watch this uh, grom chromology. Voilà. Mola, je wanda, je m'étonne que dans nos rues de francophones, construisent les gens raison bête à le French que les tonnes. Ils speakent avec des mots comme des bidico. Pour flasher un bidico, tout ça pour chou comme un guilou. On chat que c'est trop. Tout dé na tout dé. Alors, cela veut dire quoi? Cela veut dire que si tu y as molécho des mots, c'est comme des mots pour un chameau. Alors, gars, dès que tu speaks, tu joues les chics. C'est la panique. Les dogmatiques, les pragmatiques, énigmatiques, emblématiques, caroustiques, paradigmiques, prophylactiques, copropétiques, homologiques, apodictiques, c'est la réminadisa, la redynamina, la redynamisation des midi mots de base, c'est la réminadisa, la redynamina, la redynamisation des midi mots de base. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now first it kind of depicts a, like a teaching class, but I think playing further on, and we may see part of it later mm -hmm. on, 
also shows the you know people playing soccer and, and other things. And so other things. is he kind of mocking the entire society or who is he talking about? I think about? he is. Yeah. I think he's mocking everybody, but yeah. He appeals to younger people, yeah. and I even saw in an interview he did recently where he was saying, you know, I have kids, and I want my kids to, to like my music and, yeah. and think it's cool and, and to relate to it. So I think that also, even the style of the music video, yeah. it, it has a youthful quality, even yeah. though adults also like it. Yeah, there are kids yeah. in class, and then this teacher, and writing all those long, yes. complicated <laughs> compound words. and. Uh, <laughs> It's fascinating. Now, is he a new kind of uh, kid on the block in Cameroon, or has he been around? Because No, he's been uh, around for quite a while. Actually, he's a comedian at oh, the core. Really? He's a comedian. Okay. Um, but also a musician. And the last musical work he did was in 2004, an mm. album. And that launched him. Everybody loved him for, yeah. for another song where he played on words. And mm -hmm. that is why we can see him kind of this humor in whatever he's doing. Yes. Because he's mixing comedy, and of course, and, the and music and hip -hop. hip hop. Yeah. Cameroon, how big is it? And you know, I know you've been there in terms yes. of the hip hop scene. You know, the competition is stiff, right? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, the hip hop everywhere in Africa is, is just yeah. it's it's so accessible for young people. Yeah, exactly. So it's really. Uh, it is. But something. you know, he sat back for quite a while. Yeah. 10, 13 years, he hasn't done much with music. But this is. It only came out on June fifth. It's brand Great. new single, brand new video. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. My Heather. pleasure. Uh, once again, a real fantastic music maker segment. Now, to learn more about Heather Maxwell herself and her viewer radio show, visit Facebook and type in the keywords "music time in Africa" and see. Uh, you can see what time our program can be heard in your area and get more information about some of our featured artists. Well, and that is our show for today. We want to leave you with more of Chromology by a couple of Cameroon. Thank you. Good night. Même les wet qui sont les katika du French. Ne use pas dans les divas tous ces mots qui t'enchent. Mais toi le bantou, le négro ex-colonisé, à peine mondialisé, tu veux déjà whitisé. Avec les Robert et all les dictionnaires d'outre-mer, tu rends la grammaire de grammaire, mon frère, pose le cœur à terre. Le long crayon devant le peuple, noir capa avec le peuple, bêta mini pam pam, mama du ébineta, les tonneaux vides aussi jouent déjà les docteurs. Les systémiques, médianimiques, macaroniques, neurasthéniques, cyclotimiques, somnambuliques, Madrépolique, amphigurique, hypothétique, stratosphérique, c'est la redynamina, la redynamina, la redynamisation des midi mots de base, c'est la redynamina, nya 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 nya, la redynamisation des midi mots de base. Voilà, le Wiz, ça c'est stratosphérique, voilà ça, fallait me pas moi même, c'est stratosphérique. Ça t'en fait rec. <rire> Les vidéos intellectuelles, telles que je ne t'aime pas mêle qu'on pourra même quoi, c'est du n'importe quoi. Mais qu'en fanglais, nous qui les points plus que jamais. Car avec les propres mots du quad, même les white tchats l'avion pour venir ici au bout à écouter le vrai toli. Voici alors le corrigé de la chromologie. <coughs> les maps paniques. Uh -huh. L'emblématique, forgetmatique, morontoïque, ma boyali, académicien, l'enjokafique, mougouliti. Welcome to English in a Minute. A plate is a dish that you put your food on. Have a lot on your plate. Hey Anna, I'm having a party this weekend. You should come. I wish I could, but my weekend is really busy. I'm baking a wedding cake, writing my article, teaching two classes, and oh, my parents are visiting. Wow, you have a lot 